now my can is coming. Shame. Okay so here is a change of pace. Tonight's topic will deal with a subject I have no extensive knowledge on nor are there any historical accounts that give any detail to what exactly happened, only vague accounts here and there that point towards a definite battle that led to the complete annihilation of one of the seven tribes of the Aztlantines whose name is not even known but the battleground has been found that tells a tale of a battle larger than any other seen in this era of time between man. The Circo is approximately 12,300 BC the location is around the Germanic countryside. Now this is the oldest known battleground yet discovered and the fatality rate was so high that none of the warriors who died in this battle were ever properly buried so wherever they fell in battle is where they laid for eternity. What confuses archaeologists the most however are the weapons and tactics found at the battle site. Where archaeologists expected to find crude axes and sharpened sticks, instead they found arrowheads, elaborate peaks and most astonishingly horseback infantry riders and their horses and basic armored breastplates and even spiked maces. This battleground defies all known levels of warfare and weaponry as far as history has provided evidence for so far. Horses were not domesticated and used in battle until the Phoenicians and Persians around 1800 BC and bows and arrows were not used until a little later around 1200 BC there were signs of advanced metallurgy that had been inlaid to their maces which completely confused archaeologists as well considering that craft was not put into use until around 900 BC so how was this war craft used and found on an unknown battlefield that took place thousands of years before any of it was recorded being discovered and used? The battlefield itself was said to have a total of close to 7,500 dead warriors scattered across a mile and a half stretch of plateau surrounded by a few small mansions. Going into the history of the Aztlantines migration, at the beginning of their journey and separation from each other there were accounts of a civil dispute between two of the tribes. The other five tribes did not halt in their travels to help settle the dispute and the shaman elders advised that they come to terms with their differences and follow the spirit guides to their destination for the next cycle or they would become consumed by the anger of the earth and skies. They did not fear the anger of the earth or the fury of the waters really for they were at peace with those gods. It was the fury of the three sky gods that they feared the most for their home was beyond their ability to reach and speak with them to appease and soothe whatever was the reason for their anger as the legends say. But the two tribes were led by men too proud to let these things go. So their tribes faced each other in battle, in a war known as the Battle of the Three Sons. Why three sons when there are only two tribes fighting? Because a third army, the men of the north, the mansion giants, who have been the enemy of these people as far back as any had records to, had appeared and stayed undercover until after the battle started. They had heard that the Dryas people were abandoning their homelands to embark on some great journey and so they planned on giving them a farewell gift. They figured they would catch up to the other tribes now they were separated they would be easier to defeat but these two tribes would be easy. All they had to do was wait for them to wear themselves down and then sweep down and attack while they had no energy to defend themselves. Their tribes young, and most of the women and their elders who were too weak for battle traveled on and went southeast into the region of Bosnia skirting along the coastline to avoid the mansion giant's cavern-dwelling cousins, the trolls, who had hallowed out mansion enclaves all along the borders of what is now Romania, Turkey and Syria. 
Now some of this next part is speculation but this speculation's source comes from within the US government's archives of secret projects that have been declassified. This particular information came from a file called Project Blue Book which houses the source of the Aztlantines secret. That they came from another world escaping their planet's destruction. This was first discovered beneath the region of Austria by Hitler and was the source behind his Aryan agenda to create the perfect race in order to develop as pure of a genetic strain of the ancestors from which he believed all true Germans came from so that he could access its technology and win the war. The entire OSS department was designed to find out any and everything about this subject and was the reason why they hoarded and collected the religious artifacts searching for any information pertaining to this. Now religion might be a subject that requires leaps of faith to believe sometimes but this was a country that was in the middle of a world war and was the source of its conflict. To convince an entire country of such a hoax and the resources and effort needed to achieve the willing manpower that went into the OSS and their search for religious items that went into this department would have required some highly irrefutable evidence to accomplish the unquestionable loyalty and dedication the members of the Third Reich put into this agenda that survived long after Hitler's death and is still in the world as a belief and agenda being worked towards even today. Now as rumors state what they found was a ship similar to that of the movie remake of Superman that portrays something called a world engine. After the war ended America quickly moved to Siculus technology and brought it back to the US where it has remained hidden ever since and contributed to a lot of America's technology advances and a lot of Project Blue Book's information and blacklisted projects but we stray off topic. Now as I was saying, I'm pretty sure this group that separated and continued their journey that brought them into the early lands of Egypt as was documented in early accounts of the pre-dynastic Egyptians records of them having encountered the gods that came from the stars of Io from the Solaris galaxy. They brought to them the gift of knowledge of the stars, the teachings to keep track of the rising and setting of the sun that became the numeric system and the 360-day calendar year that marked the seasonal cycles of the rains beginning and end and even understood that variation of a year's number of days that would change over time eventually becoming the 365 days a year we have now, as well as the knowledge of the Manu energy and a new method of their indigo-born children that was their traditional ways of shame and birth that utilized the astrological chart and planetary alignments that they called the stars e children, this infamous meeting with the gods was the birth of sorcery in the modern age. That group integrated into the pantheon of the Egyptian gods over time. 
However the men of the north were close by and had become the gods of the Mesopotamians of Babylon and set the stage of the religious conflicts of the pre-Egyptian and post-Babylon biblical age. But returning to the battlefield to the north, it was never discovered who then two tribes were and only speculative clues say that it may have been one of the Thule tribes that was indigenous to that specific region that branched off to take part in this conflict. That is all that is really known of this battle that is still a mystery in every aspect.